this is The Parish Line, a production of SeaGov, the Calcasieu Parish Government Channel, about the events, programs, and policies of the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury. On this month's program, we will look at the efforts to train local responders during another active tornado season, visit the new location of the Calcasieu Medical Reserve Corps, and look back at the career of retiring Planning and Development Director Jimmy Vickers. First, the parish's mechanical sewer system inspection campaign is underway. Here is Jessica Williamson. The results are in after the first round of mechanical sewer system inspections. The program is going really well, at least in, from my perspective and some of the numbers I've seen. And it looks as though we've gotten about a thousand inspections that have taken place on the uh, mechanical uh, sewer systems in the parish and the particular areas that we're looking at focusing on and uh, things are going pretty good. We've got some good uh, figures as far as it look a little bit better than we had anticipated and that is um, you know we have like two-thirds that are uh, in good condition good working condition and the others are you know about a third of them that need need repair of some sort of uh, you know one thing or another that, that you know, the red tags that are left on there indicate you know what needs to be done to them the program made possible by a three-year grant includes awareness it was initially believed that 45 to 50 percent of systems were not operating properly Getting the word out to the public has possibly had a positive effect on the amount of inoperable systems. The people are going out and getting these systems repaired or, and or pumped, whatever needs to be done to them prior to the inspector going out. So we've seen a lot of that. Each area to be inspected will receive information, letting the homeowner know that an inspector will be coming. For those that would like to be present, an appointment can be made by calling the hotline. Funding is also available through the parish. Uh, the parish now has uh, funds set aside available uh, to uh, help people who are in these positions. They have to apply and show the need. Once the three-year grant funding has expired, the inspection program will continue. We anticipate that after the three-year program, the grant, uh, three-year grant program is, is done, to continue the process and, and continue the, uh, the sewer inspection program through funding that, you know, parish, through the parish itself. And I don't know whether we will apply for another grant, but this particular aspect of it has been covered by, partially funded by, through a, a DEQ grant, 319 grant. But uh, as far as beyond the three-year period, uh, we do anticipate that it will continue. More information on maintaining mechanical sewer systems and the inspection program is on the police jury website. The hotline phone number is 721-3847. For the Parish Line, I'm Jessica Williamson. The parish is inspecting approximately 33,000 mechanical systems over the next couple of years. Deadly tornado outbreaks in 2011 and the early part of this year have created an increase in concern about the violent storms. J.P. Booth reports on efforts by the Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness to bring local responders up to date on the latest science. Tornadoes aren't something we deal with on a regular basis in southwest Louisiana, but that doesn't stop the Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness. At a recent training event, employees from the Office of Emergency Preparedness, as well as other response agencies, sat down to learn all about tornadoes. Oh, hit that. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. The large number of fatalities that we had last year due to tornado-related incidents, and every one of those incidents were preceded by a tornado warning. We want to make sure that people know what, what's out there and know how to you know, take the proper precautions to protect themselves. You know, if, if, you know, a lot of people hear that we're going to do, we're having the, you know, a tornado watch or tornado warning and they don't do anything, well, that warning did you no good. So we want to make sure that everybody understands that if, if those warnings and, you know, heed those warnings when they are given. The focus that we had today was related to tornado preparedness. Everything from you know, what time of year do we see tornadoes down here in South Louisiana, as well as where's the safest place to be at home, at work. Uh, how do tornadoes form and what kind of clouds, when you're outside looking at the clouds, do you know which kind of clouds can actually develop a tornado? Even though our area deals mainly with flooding and hurricanes, Erickson tells us that being prepared for a tornado and knowing what to do in the event of one is still crucial for the individual as well as our emergency responders. 
Well, I would say, you know, people here in Calcasieu Parish probably have a big focus on flooding and uh, hurricanes because we've had so much of that in the last 10, 15 years. But tornadoes is, is something that maybe even nationally speaking has been kind of under, hasn't been thought of as much. But after the last couple of years, it's been so active with so many fatalities across the U.S. I think the uh, people are becoming aware of that. They need to take that just as seriously. One thing, we're training our emergency response people to, to uh, respond better and, and to know how to coordinate our efforts. Uh, you know, in the, in the Joplin, uh, Missouri tornado, they had a, a tornado touch ground and went nine miles. That's nine miles of, of, of total destruction. So we've got to be able to, to put our resources together and coordinate those aspects to make sure that we can go out and protect our citizens and make sure that uh, after it happens, we can take care of them. Calcutta Parish is part of a program called Storm Ready, and, uh, which is a national air service program that recognizes communities that have the ability to receive weather warnings and then also to spread the message out to the community. Uh, Calcutta Parish is only one of several parishes all across southwest Louisiana that have reached this kind of accreditation. And so, you know, the important thing is uh, how do you receive your weather information at like 2 o'clock in the morning? You know, if there's a tornado on the ground 2 o'clock in the morning, how do people uh, know about it. You know, the TV's not going to wake you up automatically. You need to, you need to have a weather radio. You need to have a, a app on your phone or something that's going to wake you up and let you know that there's bad weather out there. Annually, we do exercises throughout the year, and we usually divide them up by quarters. Uh, and we do a progressive uh, types of drills, from starting off with a seminar, progressing on up to a full functional exercise where we actually go out and and bring the equipment in, the manpower, and do all the other. And so today was the first step of doing some education on what tornadoes are, are going, uh, what happens during tornadoes. And, and our focus this year is on natural disasters. So we opted to do a, a tornado exercise throughout the year. So this part will be a, a seminar on tornadoes. Later on in the year, we'll do a, a tabletop exercise, and then we'll drill certain sections of that exercise. And then at the end of the year, or the end of the fourth quarter, We'll do a full scale, go out into people's neighborhoods and actually test what we've learned throughout the year. For the Parish Line, I'm J.P. Booth. The entire presentation can be seen on CGOV next week. Check our website for airtimes. The Calcasieu Medical Reserve Corps has a new home. Margaret Higgins gives us an inside look. The Calcasieu Medical Reserve Corps has moved to a new location in Lake Charles. Human Services Director Tarek Polik gives us the details. The relocation of our medical reserve uh, operation actually came about by us being approached by the, um, the American Red Cross at the state level in which they had recently gone through um, some restructuring uh, from their national corporate level and their building on Kirkman Street was now empty. And as part of, their, part of their new service delivery strategy, they were partnering with medical reserve programs across the state and asking them to come in and to co-locate with their uh, American Red Cross operations locally. The move has worked out well for the Medical Reserve Corps. For us, we have gained much needed space um, that we needed for that particular operation. Uh, unfortunately, prior to the move, uh, the medical reserve operation was in a very small area located at our Third Street location that was really not adequate uh, for the staff. And in addition to that, it gave us some other um, operational um, gains. Calcasieu Medical Reserve Corps Coordinator Angela Jewett explains how moving to the Red Cross building has benefited the CMRC and their volunteers. Well, we were very lucky because we had some extra office space, which we needed very badly. They have a couple big rooms in the front. Um, they have a command center in the back, which is really awesome, which, um, you know, we have access to. Uh, it'll be really nice when we do our flu campaigns because when we were going into the schools, we would keep charts and boards of the different places we're going every day. And so this will be really neat to be able to set that up. We have a... Um, have our offices set up now to be able to do orientation. As a new volunteer comes in, they can watch a video about our program. They can do some online training. We have a place we can sit them down and actually do some of the online incident command training that we didn't have before. And we also have a large warehouse in the back because we have a lot of materials for training, 
um, when we do emergency preparedness activities and when we're doing our flu clinics and things like that, we just have lots of lots of equipment. So we have um, an access to a a uh, complete storage warehouse. It's really expanded our operations a lot. If you would like more information on the Calcasieu Medical Reserve Corps move, you can call 656-0834 or visit their new location at 3512 Kirkman Street. For the Parish Line, I'm Margaret Higgins. The Calcasieu Medical Reserve Corps is a volunteer organization funded by the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury working in conjunction with the Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness. Firefighters who train at the Calcasieu Emergency Response Training Center come from the five parish area and throughout the United States. Molly Morgan has the story. The Calcasieu Emergency Training Center has made a huge impact in our community over the past several years. Superintendent for the Calcasieu Emergency Response Training Center, Mark Dagenhart, explains. Well, we, of course, were established to train volunteer firefighters in Calcasieu Parish. That's our major mission. Uh, and to help us uh, supplement our expenses here, of course, uh, we invite industrial clients in here and uh, we provide a training center for them. Many companies are not only nationwide companies, they're also worldwide companies. So it's not unusual to have a, uh, a company in here from Texas with firefighters from Ohio training with them. The Surtsey Center has had a tremendous economic impact here in our community. All of our training we do for uh, our volunteer and municipal firemen in parish is paid for by grant money. It's a grant from the police jury. The other training, the industrial training, is our revenue maker right there. So uh, we generate a considerable amount of revenue plus our economic impact, which uh, we, we total up on an occasional basis. For 2010, we estimate our, our total economic, just economic impact on the area. This is exclusive of any fees or, or costs that we charge of uh, being at least $668,000. So that's a pretty, pretty good chunk of money. Economic impact for 2011, we haven't really calculated it yet, but it should also be significant. And this year, we're hoping to do a million dollars worth of economic impact for the area. With only 247 working days and 704 total classes held throughout 2011, the center stays busy. In 2011, we had over 35,000 man hours of industrial training at this facility, which is pretty significant. The other significant statistic we have is we had over 10,000 training man hours for our volunteer firefighters in this parish. And that's a lot, and that doesn't happen every place else in the state but here. What makes the annual and regular training so significant is that a major portion of their fire insurance rating for that fire department is based on training. If that fire department has a deficiency in training, then that could work against their fire insurance rating, which will directly affect the uh, homeowners. What we like to do here, if we look at the folks who come here and train, Every fire department in this parish that consistently uses this training center has lowered their fire insurance rating, and that's millions of dollars for the people. Any volunteer fire department, and I could list them if we had time, that train here have lower insurance ratings, period. And because they train here, it's a significant factor. To find out more about the training center, log on to their website at www.certc.net. For the Parish Line, I'm Molly Morgan. You are watching The Parish Line, a production of SeaGov, the Calcasieu Parish Government Channel. One of the parish's top department directors is retiring at the end of March. Planning and Development Director Jimmy Vickers will say so long after 32 years with the parish, March 30th. Vickers spearheaded many major initiatives during his tenure, most notably the establishment of the first comprehensive zoning ordinances in the parish. Originally, when I was initially employed here, I was working for MCAL. Um, at the time, but I was assigned to the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury. Um, that's how I kind of got to know Mark McMurray and, and also Rodney Vincent. Um, we were doing work on their behalf. Um, and um, one of the things, I guess, that, uh, uh, that, that happened was is that they asked us to go ahead and try to do a new comprehensive zoning ordinance. And uh, I was selected to do that. 
and during that time, which goes back from 1976 till till just past a little bit past 1980, uh, we were able to get the first, uh, basically the first phase of that uh, document done. That happened January 9th, 1980, and I actually became a police jury employee during that time. So uh, we had many public meetings uh, while I still was with MCAL, uh, courtroom A again, I mean, it was loaded with people. Uh, uh, they had a lot of different compliments, um, and we, uh, there were a lot of concerns, though, too, because this was the first time uh, the parish had never had any type of really comprehensive zoning plan during that era. So we were able to uh, get the initial phase adopted, and subsequently other phases got adopted, and uh, uh, it, it was very good because we really... At that time, we really had some issues that were coming up, uh, particularly with uh, some of the industries and the way waste was being um, handled at that time. Uh, during that era, there were virtually no DEQ regulations. And so uh, one of the first things initially that, that, that came up during that era was a company by the name of Impact that wanted to um, put uh, waste in the salt domes over in Vinton. That was a that was a huge uh, concern for the public at that time, and subsequently, uh, the parish through the zoning ordinance and everything was able to uh, basically stall it. Uh, it was on some of the stream properties at that time. Uh, that was a pretty significant uh, time, and. Uh, many police jurors, the older police jurors and everything, although they weren't for, uh, some of them weren't for comprehensive zoning at the time because they predominantly had rural areas, they understood that if we didn't do something quick that we were going to be the commode of the United States. Calcasieu Parish has changed drastically over the last few decades. One of the biggest challenges Vickers faced was the tremendous residential development in unincorporated areas. Once those roads were done, we saw many, many subdivisions. Uh, it had some impact on, obviously, zoning regulations and everything, but what we did see is we saw quite an influx of people wanting to move where those roads were. That never happened before. We had a lot of rural roads and everything, and, and, uh, but once we kind of got the asphalt going and everything, and you know, kudos to our public works department. Uh, they did an outstanding job. We were able to work with them and then it worked, you know, it was not only just the paving of the roads but helping improve the drainage in the area. Those were all very significant steps. Another big change is the onset of new technologies that make the job of planning and zoning much easier for the public. Two areas that have especially affected planners are the onset of social media and the development of the parish's geographic information services, headed by O'Neill Hebert, that allow numerous online interactive mapping and real estate services. We have the technology now that we, we really didn't have in the early 80s. You know, we were doing colored maps and coloring them ourselves, and, and um, uh, you know, now with what we have with O'Neill and some of these other technology-type departments, it's just outstanding, the kind of work. That, that is being done here. So that has really, really been significant. And I think that the police jury has really done a good job in trying to be on the forefront of this technology that's, that's out. And it's a shared technology now uh, with, if you look with what O'Neill and them are doing with his shop and so forth, I mean, you know, you can get the maps and so forth. Uh, you know, you're right there from your own computer and uh, that makes it easier. We get a lot of good compliments about people, uh, particularly that are involved with Willistrate and appraisals and that type of thing. It just, it helps them with their job and I think that they're very appreciative. To give you an idea of Jimmy's career here, I'm, I'm gonna be 50 years old this year and I, when I graduated high school back in 1980, Jimmy was just starting his career. So he, his career has spanned a generation and in that time, Calcasieu has seen a lot of changes, and Jimmy has been a big part of that change, guiding it in a positive way. Uh, 
If you go back to 1980 and compare the census population to 2010, we've grown 35% in the unincorporated areas. So you've seen this huge migration. And with that comes a lot of demands on our services. Well, Jimmy has guided a lot of that in an orderly way, in a way that's prudent, with a comprehensive zoning map that was developed back in the 80s, long before you had a lot of people living out in these areas. And he was also responsible for a lot of codes that have been developed for the public's safety, whether you're talking about plumbing codes, electrical codes, anything related to something that people would want to make sure that their families are taken care of in the building of homes and businesses and so forth. So Jimmy oversaw what was an almost non-existent uh, development type situation in the unincorporated area, certainly at the level of residential that we have, to what is today many, many suburbs and commercial developments now and some, some industrial projects. And he's, he's sort of overseen that rather large transformation to what we are today and we can thank him for guiding that in, in ways that uh, have made a big positive difference in Calcasieu. I mean, Jimmy Vickers in the Plain Department, uh, his, uh, his work there has been legendary, I think, uh, over the years. Um, th that's one of the tougher jobs. That's one that I said I never wanted to, uh, to be the director of planning and zoning. I mean, the, if, you've sat through, if you've ever sat through a zoning case uh, and seen neighbors that might have been friends for all their lives at each other's throats about whether a travel trailer needed to be parked in the yard or not, you, you know what, uh, what somebody like him has had to go through over the years. So Jimmy was, has been a great asset and continues to be. Jimmy is a solid individual. He's, he's just got such high character. And in that position as planning and development director, you deal with a lot of people in the community, the businesses, uh, you deal with a lot of elected officials, a lot of other agencies and that person has the ability to influence a lot of things and Jimmy's influence was always very positive uh, beyond question about his ethics and uh, that made him so effective in his job. It's surreal thinking the day is is upon us you know and uh, um, but at the same time I'm looking forward to retirement uh, with my three years uh, at MCAL and then my 32 here um, you know, I, I've had a great career, um, just a lot of good things, uh, many good elected officials, many good staff. I've had a great staff. I've just enjoyed them so much and they've helped me. I mean, they, you know, they're really what it's all about. With Vickers' retirement, Wes Crane has been named the new Calcasieu Parish Planning and Development Director. That's the Parish Line for the month of March. Thanks for watching. For more information on any of these stories or to see the program online, visit our website at cppj.net.